Hey, welcome back class. Uh, now we're discussing Margaret Fuller and the piece of hers that we read this week is called, um, well, it's an excerpt actually from her larger work, called Woman in the 19th Century, apropos, since we're studying, of course, women writers of the 19th century. So there you go. We will read an excerpt from that much larger work that Margaret Fuller wrote. Uh, if you look at the written out lecture, there is a lovely portrait or painting of Margaret Fuller. I wasn't able to find a photo of her. Um, many of our authors from the 19th, or from the 18th, from the 1800s and forward, we do have photos of because photography had been invented. Um, forget exactly when in the 1800s, but you know, uh, we definitely have Civil War photos and photography was around um, a little more before that. Um, and before, you know, of course, inventions always came around well before they entered the public fray. So I'm um, not sure exactly when it was invented, but for sure it was being used um, by mid-century and onwards. Um, but we only have a, a portrait of Margaret Fuller and um, perhaps that's because she died so young, unfortunately. Um, anyway, the written out lecture has several interesting web links. Um, if you'd like to check those out, feel free. Uh, there is uh, a web, of course, we have a couple different ones that present um, more in-depth uh, biographical and literary information on Margaret Fuller. Um, and there is a PBS website with, with that as well. Um, and then another website that uh, puts Margaret Fuller within the tradition of transcendentalism. Okay, transcendentalism became very famous in the, in the 1800s. You may have heard of Ralph Waldo Emerson or Henry David Thoreau. Those who were very famous transcendentalists, as was Margaret Fuller herself. She that was the circle she ran in. Um, Louisa May Alcott was also another writer that we read this week. Um, was also in that circle and, and was taught by uh, Margaret Fuller, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and Henry David Thoreau. So anyway, um, that was the the circle that um, Margaret ran in in her elite group of Bostonian thinkers. All right. Well, Margaret Fuller. She uh, lived in the United States. She was born in 1810 and lived till tragically only 1850. Uh, she died at 40 years of age, um, along with her lover and child in a shipwreck, a shipwreck during a storm just off the coast of New York. So very sad. Um, Margaret's liberal ideologies were facilitated at quite a young age by her father, um, who himself was a graduate of Harvard. Um, and Harvard, of course, is in that state, Massachusetts, um, where she lived. Uh, and her father was also a Unitarian by religion, um, as were uh, many of the other transcendentalists, like Ralph Waldo Emerson. Um, her father taught Margaret just as any man would teach his son. It was very important to him that Margaret learn all the things that a boy would. So I'm sure he was very instrumental in forming her ideologies about women and women's rights uh, because he thought she was equally as entitled to um, a full and complete education as, as uh, any man would receive. He tutored her, therefore, in Latin, grammar, and rhetoric, which were the, that's called um, the uh, the three, those are the three or trivia um, ways that people were taught in a classical education fashion. Um, so that's called a classical education or education in um, what would have been considered in classical times, the three most important um, areas of study, Latin, grammar, and rhetoric. Rhetoric is the arc of argumentation. So you can see how that would play really well in to Margaret's formation as a writer who would write to argue things, argue particular points of view, because she was taught in and, and studied um, effective ways to argue. Um, her father actively worked hard to preclude any female stereotype, stereotype from implanting itself in her brain. So she was raised very uh, revolutionarily 
for the time period um, and that I'm sure helped in and form the revolutionary thinker she became about women and women's rights. Thus, brought up as a woman, isolated from the prevailing notions of femininity in the United States, Margaret became the first woman fully to support herself as a journalist in America. That's kind of neat. She was able to fully support herself as a journalist. Yeah. Um, so that's a writer, you know, who would be published in journals, you know, journals like literary magazines and things like that. Uh, active in an elite group of Bostonian thinkers, as I mentioned already, Margaret met Ralph Waldo Emerson, fellow transcendentalist, and became the editor of the transcendentalist magazine, The Dial. So she became an editor of that magazine that uh, published all of the other famous transcendentalist writers' um, works. Transcendentalism, in fact, informed much of Margaret Fuller's philosophy on and writings about female and male roles and equality between males and females. Horace Greeley himself was a famous editor, and he hired Margaret as a literary critic for the New York Daily Tribune. So pretty neat, you know, she's getting wonderful opportunities that, you know, had hitherto been denied to women. Uh, in New York, Margaret also helped establish a halfway house for convicts. She moved to Europe as a foreign correspondent even. That's really neat. She wrote on foreign affairs in Europe for an American audience. There, she took 10 year younger Giovanni Angelo as a lover and bore a child with him even. Now, unfortunately, their return to America ended their lives. It's unknown whether they had married um, by the time they were coming back to America. So he may have been her husband at that time and not, not, um, just a lover, but also a husband. Maybe we just don't know. Anyway, that, that the ship wrecked and, and all three of them drowned Giovanni, Angelo, Margaret Fuller, and her young child that she was bringing back to America. So very, very sad end to her life. And she was cut short. I, I just wonder what other works we would have, um, had of hers, of that, that great mind, um, had she continued to live on beyond her 40 years. The excerpt of Margaret Fuller's that we read for class comes from her longer work, as I mentioned, called Woman in the 19th Century. Uh, that work was published in 1845, so five years before she died. Um, that work evolved itself from an essay that she had originally written for that transcendentalist magazine that she was the editor for called The Dial. Uh, the excerpt's transcendental underpinnings are obvious. Margaret wrote the longer piece in response to her being asked to clarify the views she presented in the original The Dial essay. So she had written some transcendentalist views on, on women in that in that uh, transcendental magazine that she edited, and they wanted her to expand upon that. So she did. She expanded in her longer work called Woman in the 19th Century. Thus, Margaret goes to great lengths to explain and recapitulate the points she makes about women, men, their natures, and their rights in that longer work. But we're reading just a short part of that for class because we don't have time to read the whole thing. So better, better some than none, right? So we're reading an excerpt from it. So enjoy Margaret Fuller's life and the writing of hers that we read for class this week. Hey, okay. please enjoy. <laughs>